Why do artists lick their brushes? What is spit shaping? What is spit shading? You're about to find out. My silicoil video started a few conversations. If you missed it, I'll put a link in the video description. A certain Mrs. Barnabas shared an interesting way to preserve and shape your brushes, watercolor brushes, which she learned from Rosemary of Rosemary and Company to lick them. Initially, when I read that comment, I figured Joyce must not have learned this because she never taught it to me. However, then I remembered. You know, some painters would put their paintbrush in their mouth and get a real nice point on it. But then they're eating paint. Yep. I was completely disgusted and I did not want to give it a try. However, now, I feel like I should test this for science. So sit back and enjoy. <laughs> Stop, do not lick your oil brushes, seriously. Don't do it. Now this is the way that I recommend doing this. First, paint something awesome. Then wash your brushes thoroughly with a soap with no dye, no additives. Make sure you get it rinsed out really well too. Mrs. Barnabas includes the step of using a cheap conditioner. Let it dry, rinse it out completely. Then you lick them. It's clean! My daughter's over here looking at me like I'm nuts. It's a weird feeling. This is called spit shaping. Put them away or they will just stiffen up. So why does this work? Saliva will act as a bonding agent so that the bristles will actually bond together and they'll stay together, maintaining its shape. It is most likely the enzymes lipase and amylase that contribute to the effectiveness of brush shaping. I wish I knew more of the science, but I don't know how to look into that. Spit shading is when you have one brush loaded with pigment and the other is meant for you to lick. In this case, I'm gonna put spit into this little cap here and reload the spit as needed. You lay down your pigment and then you bring it out, fade it. But what about the artists that used to use their mouth to make a fine point on their paintbrushes while they were painting? Mostly, these were miniature artists and watercolor artists. But there is a dark history to this method, and it led to numerous deaths. From 1917 to 1936, the U.S. Radium Corporation, originally named Radium Luminous Materials Corporation, was using radium-infused paint to produce goods such as watches and compasses that would glow in the dark. Because the dials and the numbers were so small, women were thought to be ideal workers. They were instructed to use the lip dip paint method. Other safer methods were thought to be a waste of materials. These women were ensured that radium was not only safe, but in small doses, extremely beneficial to health. With that knowledge, most of them took to painting their fingernails, teeth, faces, splattering it on their hair. Which when you think about it, the more they encouraged them it was safe, the more materials they lost. They did all this so that they would stand out at the dance hall. When some of the girls became ill, the company started to buy out the doctors and the researchers that could uncover the truth that they already knew because the owners and the higher paid employees, mostly males, wore lead aprons, gloves, and often use tongs to handle the radium. Painting is already a dangerous profession. Even though some paints boast that they are non-toxic, I would not trust this. Think of the names of some of your favorite paints. Cobalt blue, cadmium red, zinc yellow. They are so named due to the materials used to make the pigment. So please do not put a pigment loaded brush into your mouth. If you use the spit shading or spit shaping method, make sure your brush is clean. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for the idea, Mrs. Barnabas. 
and I will see you all next time. Getting old's the pits. It ain't for the weak. How's this? That's better. That's par for the course. Is this my old lady? Is this right? No, I didn't go to a university. But I did get my PhD. Putting husband through. <laughs> <laughs>